Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's tackle the concept of convolution. Convolution is kind of a hmm, kind of a confusing subject. So there's different ways of looking at it, and we'll start with our first definition of what a convolution is. We're going to define it in terms of the inverse Laplace transform. It's simply a tool that we can use to make it easier in some cases to take the inverse Laplace transform. What we mean by that is as follows. Mathematically, we write the convolution as the product of two functions. The product has a little star symbol in it, and it's not so strictly a product, because you'll see in just a moment, we'll need to do something to one of the two functions in such a way that we can convolve one with the other. And then later on, we'll show you some graphical examples to solidify our understanding of convolution. But right now, what we need to realize when we convolve these two functions, we get the output response function. In other words, let's go over here. Notice that y of t is the response of the system. So it's the output of the system. Let's say we have some electronic circuit, and we have some input to the circuit, and then the circuit does something to the input, and then we get an output to the circuit. y is the response or the output of the circuit, and we say that as y of t. To get that, we have to multiply or better yet, convolve, as we call it, the excitation of the system, which is x, with the impulse response of the system. So what we need to do is we need to have, this is basically the input to the system, the voltage input or the current input to the system, how the system responds to that, and then the output of the system is then the y of t. Mathematically, when we convolve these two functions, x being the excitation of the system and h being the impulse response of the system, notice how we mathematically define it. It is the integral of the first function, which is the excitation of the system, so it's the current or voltage input of the system, multiplied times h. Now notice what we've done here. Instead of writing as a t variable, we've taken the dummy variable tau, so that's now our variable, the limit is from 0 to t, and notice that we have it as t minus tau. So first of all, we take the variable, the time variable, and we make that a negative time variable, and then we write it as t minus tau. t, of course, in this case, would just be a constant inside this integral sign. And I say, well, what does all that mean? Well, we'll get to that with some examples later, but first of all, notice that this means that it's the product of the two original functions in the frequency domain. So the convolution of the two functions in the time domain is equal to the product of the same two functions in the frequency domain, which means that we can take the product in the frequency domain and write it as the convolution of the two functions in the time domain, which can be, then be defined like this. And of course, at this moment, you look at this and go, I'm not quite sure what that means. That's quite all right. Just take it in for now, and we'll show you later how to use it. But ultimately, since we wanted to define it as a tool for the inverse Laplace transform, let's say that we have the product in the frequency domain of 1 over s squared multiplied times 1 over s minus a. Let's say that represents this right now. So of course, if we take the inverse Laplace transform of this, we should get back the original response of the system, which is what we're looking for, the, the oh, well here, the response of the system, y of s. Of course, we're going to take the inverse Laplace transform of this to get back the original function that we're looking for. But notice that if it's defined like this, and we can then realize that it's simply the product of two functions in the frequency domain, then this can be said to be equal to the convolution of the same two functions in the time domain. So this can then be written as the convolution of x of t with h of t. And that is defined as follows. So this is defined as the integral of x of tau, we're going to use the dummy variable, integrated from 0 to t, times h of t minus tau, d tau. Now, what are x and h equal to? Those are simply the inverse Laplace transforms of these two functions. Even though they're multiplied, we can simply inverse transform each one of them. Now, the inverse transform of 1 over s squared is simply t. Now, of course, in the dummy variable, x of tau will simply be tau. So this can be written as the integral of tau from 0 to t. 
So that would be the inverse transformer, 1 over s squared becomes tau, and then we multiply that times the, then the inverse Laplace transformer, 1 over s minus a. Well, 1 over s minus a is the unit step function, we'll just call it 1, times e to the plus a t. So it would be times e to the plus a times t, but instead of t, we're going to write, where do we have it? t minus tau. So the dummy variable becomes tau, so we take t, we take the negative of t, and subtract it from t here, so we're going to write this as t minus tau times d tau. In other words, instead of going to the process of, take, of writing it as the partial fraction summation and then finding a, b, and c, and so forth, we could simply say, ah, I'm going to take the inverse Laplace transform of this, the inverse Laplace transform of that, I'm going to convolve the two, so I'm going to find x and h, I'm going to convolve them, which means I'm going to take the integral of the first one, x, of course the Laplace transform of 1 over s squared is simply t, and the Laplace transform of 1 over s minus a is e to the a t, but since we have to change the t to a t minus tau, we replace the t to t minus tau times d tau, and all we have to do is integrate this, and we'll get the final result y of t. Now in this video, we don't have enough board space to show you how to find the integral of that, so I'm going to make the next video, 45, and show you that we can actually integrate this and get the result of this particular function in the frequency domain to get the corresponding response function, whoop, where are we, response function y of t in the time domain. But that's why we need to be able to convolve two functions like that to make it sometimes easier to get the inverse Laplace transform. Now you may sit there and go, well, but he still didn't explain what a conv convolution is. We'll get to that and in a few more videos. We'll show you the graphical methodology of, of computing the convolution so you can see what it actually is. So that's the first definition. More to come.